Good, now we're learning <clears throat> Pirkei Avot. And we're on the third chapter, the six chapters altogether. And the third, the tenth law. Tenth law of the third chapter, here we go. Let's go back one. These are laws by <clears throat> various, what they call the Tanaim. And here we have Rabbi Chenina Ben Dosa. Rabbi Chenina Ben Dosa, last time we learned one statement that he made. And today, today we're going to learn a couple others. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosi was a pupil of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. <clears throat> this is right in the time of the destruction of the temple. Right in the, in the time or immediately, immediately thereafter. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosi, he, was, he was, did a lot of miracles. Did a lot of amazing miracles. One of the miracles that he did, it says that... Um, uh, once there was a rabbi, I think it was even Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, and he was very sick, and he told his prayer to his, his pupils to pray for him, and nothing happened. And his this Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa prayed, and immediately he got better. <clears throat> and he said, "I would." His other people say we could pray all day and night, and God might not answer us. But he immediately Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, there was a, a place where there was this big uh, sort of serpent. It was called the Arvad. And it used to um, jump out and bite people. And nobody knew what to do. And they called him and he put his foot over the hole. And this Arvad came and bit him and it died. And they said, woe to the person who gets bitten by the Arvad and woe to the Arvad that gets bitten, that, that bites Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa. <clears throat> So they're very, a holy person. Okay, let's go. Last time, this is last, uh, yesterday, two days ago, we learned a couple of sayings by Rabbi Yochanan ben Hanira ben Dosa, and we're going to learn some more. Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa said, and we explained this before, so we'll just go over quickly. Anyone whose fear of sin <clears throat> is Is, is secondary to his wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry, I started at the wrong place. Anyone whose fear of sin precedes his wisdom, in other words, the main, his main concern why he wants to learn the Torah is because he wants to serve God and he's afraid of doing anything wrong, of relying on himself. So therefore, he's always aware that God is greater than he is and always wants to act Accordingly, in other words, what I think is right and what I'm sure is right is not necessarily right. So that means fearing sin. So if the fear of sin comes before your learning, then your learning will, <clears throat> will be permanent. In other words, it's attached to something real, not just your own intelligence. And, but a person whose intelligence and his learning and his erudition is first, that's the most important thing. And after that, he has fear of sin. Then it won't last long because when he disagrees with God, with what it says in God, so he'll find some way with his wisdom to, to get himself out of it, to say, you know, may, maybe God agrees with me. He used to say, any person who has more deeds than wisdom, in other words, he does more than what is expected of him, then his wisdom <coughs> will be sustained. But anyone whose wisdom is more than his deeds, then his wisdom will not be Sustained. In other words, the main thing is action to do in this world, not just not just to be <clears throat> very smart and very knowledgeable, <clears throat> because it's very possible to be very smart and very knowledgeable, knowledgeable, not to do any things that you can't control your own heart. In other words, you can't. So the idea is, first of all, control your heart, and then after that, control your mind. Another saying, who I Omer used to say, Kol Shuruach Abriot Nocha Mimenu. Anyone who people are pleased with him, ruach hamakom nochem then God is pleased. Okay, now this doesn't mean that you should flatter people and that you should relinquish your principles and your values in order to be popular. That's not what it means. It means once you know what is right and you have the fear of God and you have knowledge, so then the things that you do should be done in a pleasant way. It was once you know what is right to do, then it has to be done in a way which is pleasing to others. Because doing the right thing is of the utmost importance, but it also depends not just what you do, but how you do it. 
We'll see the explanation. But a person who <coughs> others do not like him, then God doesn't like him. Let's see what this means. Call Misha Oev Sha'ahuv Lamata, anyone who is admired and loved by others, then you know that God loves him also. That's what it means. In other words, you have to know what is right and do what is right, but it has to be done in a pleasant way. As it says, <clears throat> there's a commandment uh, right after we say Shema Yisrael that says, You should love God with all of your heart. You should love God, love God. But there's another explanation that means that you should make others love God. In other words, your actions should be so pleasant. People look at you and say, Oh, this is nice. Look at this, this is a very, very uh, a person that's acting properly. He, he's, he lives according to his principles, his values. He's not a coward. He's not affected by peer pressure. But on the other hand, he doesn't get mad and he's not, he doesn't think he's superior to everybody, etc. Okay, Rabbi Dosa Ben Herkinus, he said, Shina shall shachris, sleeping too late, Yayan shall tsarayim, getting drunk in the afternoon, Sichas Yeladim, speaking loosely like children do, yeshiva beit knesset shalom oretz, gathering together with these empty people, mutzim et adam in olam. This takes a person out of the world. It takes them out of the world. What does it mean? Let's look. Let's have a look. Shir <clears throat> shachris, a person a person that goes to sleep, ad she ones kriyashma over it. He sleeps too late in the morning so that he misses saying shema. Now shema Yisrael. Excuse me. Is supposed to you try supposed to try to say Shema Yisrael before the first fourth of the daytime, right? The daytime. Let's say for instance the sun rises up at six in the morning. So Shema Yisrael, let's say, is nine o'clock. Just for an example. But there's a, there's a time of the commandment. So don't go to sleep and you miss this time. <clears throat> well, sleep is more important to you than saying the than doing the commandment of saying Shema Yisrael in the proper time. What about drinking wine in the afternoon? What does he do? Moshev libo, Moshech libo shalom. A person starts drinking wine and he starts to enjoy it. Moshech biyayin et basari umevi oto liyadei shichros. Like it says, it brings a person to be drunk. He gets drunk in the afternoon and he enjoys life. Life is wonderful, but he doesn't get anything done. He's all drunk and he thinks he's getting things done just because of his attitude and his craziness. But really, he just made himself drunk. Sichaz yeladim. What does it mean? Mevatlim es avoteyan. Dealing too much with your children <clears throat> or meaningless talk, this uh, prevents a person from learning Torah. Yeshiva Beit Kenesi Amir Arts, Shemachnisim, Shemit Kansin, they get together and they speak, Devorim Betelim, all sorts of news and with what's happening in the sports and things like this. And they talk and they talk and they get absolutely nothing done and they feel that, oh, they've just accomplished something, they win this big argument about, you know, uh, the, which country is the best in the world, and which president is the best, and whether this, and meanwhile, they're not doing the right thing. Now, you have, there's an important point over here, and the point, important point is, is that <clears throat> the Torah, learning the Torah, is in a very, very, is a very, it is a very amazing, and worthwhile, and precious, and eternal occupation. Even though we have no sense of what it means eternal in this world, but the fact is, is that learning Torah is infinitely valuable, and uh, uh, you say it's 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 um, uh, permanent, permanent. So any moment that's taken away from learning Torah, if it's for something important, then that's good. But if it's not for anything that's important or necessary, or something to do with Judaism or improving the world, then it's a total waste of time. And that's what the Rebbe is saying. That's what uh, Rebbe. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> Rabbi Dosa Ben Horkinus is trying to tell us that don't waste your time with extra sleep, extra drinking wine, extra talking, and etc. Use your time for precious things because time itself is very precious. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, see you tomorrow at 8.15 for Hasidut.